Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a what's in my bag and one year on review of my beloved Dior book tote. I actually haven't done one of these videos in a long time because I wanted to give a lot of the bags that I have purchased over the past kind of year or so time to actually like, you know, have their true colors shown, if that makes sense. There are some times where I, back in the day, would do like a what's in my bag and review and be like, I love this bag because we all love our bags when they are new. And obviously we've spent a lot of money on them and we want to love them. But actually I wanted to kind of take a step back and then reflect a year on and see how I was feeling about some of my bag purchases. So if you're interested in hearing my thoughts, my regrets, what this fits in, how I'm finding it one year on, then keep on watching. So this is the Dior book tote with the blue embroidery in the original size. They make this in a smaller size now and I get asked all the time what size I have. It is like the original size, which is like my perfect tote size, even though I think for some people it's probably huge. I like to carry a lot of stuff, what can I say? I purchased this for myself at Christmas 2019. And this bag was a big game changer for me in the way I consume and purchase bags. Before I'd been very into my like YSLs, my Chloe, I had Chanel bags. And I think at the time of purchasing this, I had one like little Dior bag that I picked up at Vista Village. I miss that bag so much. It's an evening bag, so it gets no love right now. But I would very much purchase bags that were around the 1,200 back in the day when you could actually find a designer bag that was priced at that price. I feel like they all kind of sit around 1,400 now. But previously I've very much gone for the almost lower end of the scale in terms of designer bag purchases. And I've made much more frequent purchases throughout the year, but this really changed the game for me. I spent more on it than I typically would ever have spent on designer bags that weren't Chanel before. And I really loved it in a very different way to the way I I have loved my YSLs and my Chloe bags and because of that it really changed the way I went on to purchase designer bags after this so I love it for that for one because I made two designer bag purchases in 2020. So I purchased this on Vestia Collective the season after I feel like this really boomed and it was basically impossible to get hold of so that was really my only option for purchasing this and I just knew that I wanted it so much I really wanted to purchase a tote bag because I felt like that was one thing that was really missing from my wardrobe and and I love my Saint Laurent Reeve Gauche, which is a big kind of beachy style tote bag. And as much as I've seen people use these as beach bags, it's not the way I personally would use it. But I actually really liked this for more of a work tote bags that was where I felt the Reeve Gauche was kind of inappropriate and it just didn't really work especially going into the winter time summer I can kind of like get away with it it's a very summery vibe but going into winter I didn't have anything to fill that gap in my wardrobe and pre-covid I had lots and lots of trips to London and I traveled a lot and I thought this would make a perfect travel bag as well which it, it doesn't it doesn't I'll explain so I knew this was something I wanted and I wasn't willing to wait to see if it would come back into stock and I also wasn't willing to wait and see if there was going to be a massive price hike on this as well because there already had been since it had been brought out in the first place I think it retailed for a lot less the first time it launched and I'm glad I didn't wait because it did continue to price hike this bag was an original design from Maria Grazia Turi when she joined Dior and it's definitely one of the most like iconic bag designs I think that we've seen in kind of recent years other than your like really iconic Dior designs you know. So December 2019 if you could get your hands on this this was going to cost you I think £2,000. It now retails for £2,150 I believe. I'm gonna check my notes. Yes. I bought this on Vestiaire Collective for £1,800 and that was obviously pre-loved but never worn so it was just in like pretty much the same condition. It still had that really square structure to it that the Dior book totes have when they haven't been worn before you can kind of see if you like look on the website or look at anyone that's just bought a brand new one the structure on the sides like these lines look really like straight and rigid and then the bottom kind of wants to fold in a little bit as if it's ready to be like packed down flat like an actual shopper bag so i purchased this for a little bit less than it was actually like selling for in stores though had i been able to get this in stores i probably would have purchased it in store and i'll tell you why later but i am happy that i did manage to get it for that price because i knew that due to like the material of this bag and also the fact that it is like heavily logoed and monogrammed it could potentially be something that I fell out of love with later in life it's not a later in life maybe in a couple of years time <laughs> if I fall out of love with it later in life I think 
it would have been a good purchase but because it's heavily logoed like heavy logos come and go in terms of like trends so i wasn't sure if it would remain in my wardrobe forever because of that but also the material because it is fabric it is definitely more open to wear and tear and i'm not going to baby a tote bag because it is going to come a lot of places with me it's going to be there for work it's going to have so much stuff put in it it's potentially going to travel with me so i didn't want to purchase something that i was going to have to baby and i'm happy that i got a little bit of money off because of that in the first point because these bags i don't feel like hold their resale value in the same way that some other bags do however resale of this does seem to be all over the shop there are some bags that are obviously in a very good condition that are selling for I think up to £1,900 but then there are some that are selling very very low and are selling for like £1,200. That's for this design in particular though there are other designs like the more unique designs some of them go for much less but some of them go for way more. I think depending on how highly sought after the design is but also those designs some of the more unique ones on the Dior website itself are priced much higher. This I think is the most affordable kind of embroidery design. They also do this in a lot of different bag styles now as well. You've got like a mini one, you've got one that's kind of like got a thicker strap on the top, which I don't love. They also did like what I can only describe and I think they actually marketed it as like a gardening bag which I would love if anyone ever wants to get me a really bougie Christmas present. Honestly, the Dior embroidered gardening bag would be it. But anyway, resale of this bag in particular is a little bit all over the place. It's interesting to see, but it doesn't particularly impact my feelings on the bag because I went into purchasing this knowing that I was gonna like love this and potentially destroy it over my lifetime because it was one of those bags that is just going to be very, very well loved. Now, obviously COVID heavily impacted everyone at the start of, or started to impact at the start of 2020 it continues to do so thanks hon and when we were first locked down i was like there's no way i'm going to get any use out of this i'm not traveling i'm not going to london what am i going to use this for but actually this is one of the i would say three most used bags for me of 2020 and that is due to some very specific lifestyle circumstances but i also think there's a lot of people that aren't in my very unique little circumstance that would still get a lot of use out of this some people just absolutely love a tote bag and i respect that so for those that don't know i own my own home and my boyfriend owns his own home as well so we kind of go back and forth between the two properties a lot so this has been an amazing bag for me in terms of going between two houses is it essentially a very fancy sleepover bag yes yes it is but it is also very handy when we are not locked down when we're in that weird limbo phase i found myself not really wanting to leave the house with just a small bag if we're going for a day out so we're going to brighton going for lunch and i'm going to be out the house for more than an hour or so more than just popping to my local shop i suddenly get very anxious and i'm like what if i need this and what if i need this and what if i need that and i did find myself using this so much i also really liked taking it out with me when i was doing not like food shops so you can but more like day out experiences where we might be popping into a few shops this is a great handbag to have because you can throw it over your shoulder so it doesn't particularly get in the way but if i do need to purchase things i can put them in this bag and i'm not just like left with a day bag and then loads of annoying like carry bags so i have found that it has just been very very useful to me which was surprising because i honestly thought when we were locked down that it was game over for this bag and it was going to be like a i'll oh, see you in 2021 old friend but no so for me it works well not only as a day bag but also as a travel bag and also as a work bag when I'm allowed to go back to work. So that is definitely a big pro of it is it's very versatile to me personally. I know not everyone is going to find a bag of this size versatile. It's all very much individual differences but the weight of it also it's not particularly heavy because it is an embroidered bag. It's definitely a little bit more lightweight which I love. It only becomes heavy because of the sheer amount of stuff that I put in this and that is like my my own doing that's my own issue we'll get onto that in a minute because there's a lot of stuff in here right now like when I'm holding it up like this to you guys just know that my arm is shaking the aesthetic is also a huge plus point of it for me personally because I love this design I just think it's so beautiful even like with the logo not showing I just think it's the most stunning bag it adds a really beautiful bit of texture to an outfit which is something that i being a monochrome wearing lover i really gravitate towards in terms of like bags i love a bag that has a bit of texture in some way whether it's quilting monogramming a grain if it's got texture i'll love it i also love the color as well because it's not a color but it's also not like your typical black or white. And this tone in particular is one that I found to be a great addition to my wardrobe. So aesthetically, it is stunning. Like I really do look at it and I'm like, this is just a work of art. And I think that's one of the reasons why 
I just love it so much and that impacted me so much in terms of the way I purchased designer bags and have done after this one because I just wanted every single bag that I purchased to have that same like wow effect which is why I got the Louis Vuitton Pochette Matisse and the other pro of it is the structure I really thought that this would look a hell of a lot worse than it currently does by this point in time however I have added to the inside of it in a way that helps it keep its structure a lot better and if it's completely not in use for say like a week or two what I would do is flatten it down just to kind of bring it back to its original structure because it's very like easily malleable like if you left it in an awkward position for a bit it would kind of like mold to that shape but it does bounce back I don't know what to call this like the seams or the edging of it it is very structured and has held its shape very very well considering the amount of stuff that's gone in this bag the amount of use that it gets so I'm really impressed with how well it has retained it's very kind of square shape it's not perfect it doesn't look like it's new because it is a year old now and i literally use this every single day and i think it's doing so well for that the wear and tear on the handles isn't too bad either though i would consider at this point just to stop it getting too much worse i would consider getting handle protectors for myself i obviously couldn't add like a scarf or a twilly or anything like that because that would just that would be a bit too much for this bag you know but i think it could do with a really lovely like matching navy handle protector at the top just to stop it getting any more worn i will see if i can show you up close the camera's going to want to focus on my face so that is what the handles are kind of looking like up close i will link the video of my what i got for christmas where i revealed this because i show the bag in that and you can go and see for yourselves like how it compares then and now because it might be that we all look back at that video and we're like oh it's a completely different color hmm. but i don't think it is i think it's actually holding up really well and even in terms of the creamy tone on the handles like the fabric of it it doesn't look too discolored which i am very impressed with because little miss foundation fingers over here i would have expected it to be orange and it's not so it's doing really well in that sense and because it's like a grey tone it's not really like got discolored as quickly as a white would and i think that's great so moving on to cons because of the embroidery it isn't wipeable and getting stains on this is something that i do think about fortunately it hasn't happened which i'm very very happy about i'm just not really a spiller i've come to that conclusion i it's something i don't really need to worry about it also doesn't have any compartments like not even one little additional compartment to the back with like a little zip pocket nothing like that and i kind of understand why because i think in terms of the bag structure it's one of the reasons that it holds its structure so well if you don't overfill it had they put in a zip compartment here or on the front side on the inside i think if you overfilled or put anything too heavy in it even like keys the parts of the bag would start to collapse in i also can't imagine how expensive this would have been had the design added more compartments to it i'll take my little additional compartments that i've added myself for the small price that it cost me and i'll have a bag that doesn't have any compartments in terms of outfits that it goes with i'm yet to find an outfit that this really doesn't work with but personally for me i'm not a fan of prints or too much in terms of color i'm a neutrals girl so this works perfectly like i said adding a little bit of texture and interest to what can often be a very very plain outfit i would say it definitely works better with my winter wardrobe just my winter to color palette in general it gets very very neutral whereas sometimes i dabble in a few more pastels during the summer and that might be where i bring the Saint Laurent reef gauche in and the two work really well for me they're not too dissimilar in size either though i would say this is more of a square shape than the reef gauche which is slightly longer on the note of the shape though it's another potential con in terms of having as a hand luggage bag because it is very structured which is amazing it holds its shape beautifully and i think that's going to really help it stand the test of time however getting on a plane and being asked to put this under the seat in front of you not ideal because it's often too tall and you are going to have to kind of cram it or lean it and because there's no zip closure on the top that can lead to things potentially falling out of it it's another reason why i wouldn't put it overhead as well so if you're on a small plane this could be potentially problematic and the fact that there is obviously no zip closure on the top is also a con in terms of like personal safety however there are great bag add-ons that you can purchase now that can potentially have zips or some kind of fastening at the top that can like close over your belongings so if you are going to look for an organizer for it that is an option that you could potentially explore so that is my long last roundup of this bag my one regret my one regret for this bag is that i would love to have had this personalized i would love to have bought it at a place like i believe it's harrods that might have changed but at the point of purchasing this it was harrods that you could purchase a book tote from and you could have your name embroidered on the back 
that would have made my absolute life. Like I said, I was prepared to purchase this and be in it for like the long haul. This was like a bag, a bag for life. I wasn't in this for the resale or as an investment. This was a purchase that I was just super excited about and I thought was gorgeous and that I would keep in my wardrobe for a really long time. So in terms of having like my name on the back, I would have absolutely loved it. But at the time they were just impossible to get your hands on. And then we obviously went into lockdown as well. So realistically, there was no way I was getting near a store last year even when they were back in stock so i would still be waiting to have my personalized dior book tote right now and to be honest it's just not an essential it doesn't affect the styling of the bag it doesn't affect the wearability of it literally has like no impact other than it would have been a nice thing to have so that is my review of the bag i love it it suits my lifestyle so well it suits my wardrobe so well so i am a very happy customer a very happy purchaser of this bag i'm really happy with it i have no regrets over the color that i went for or the design i think anything else would be one of those really gorgeous things that sits in my wardrobe but doesn't get worn a lot this has just been worn so much and loved so much and i'm so pleased about that but now i'm going to show you what this fits inside and as you can see like i said we've had a little like renovation going on we've got an extension going on in there i purchased a bag organizer for this bag and let me tell you it was one of the best purchases that I made last year. I actually should have put it in my best purchases of 2020. Let me show you this in full. I've not cleaned this out and this is felt so it could have my hair all over it. I picked up this bag organizer from Amazon. Honestly, one of the best purchases that I've made. I had a couple before for previous bags. So I had one that I purchased for my Mulberry. Is it the Bayswater? I can't remember. I have a video. I have a what's in my bag on that bag. Lots of people ask about that. My mum actually has it now. There's lots of my bags that I don't want to to sell or pass on so she has them because I know that if I ever want to wear them I can literally just like nip over and borrow the bag back so I did have a few new bag organizers but they were a much smaller shape but I really wanted something for the book tote that would not only organize the bag but also add structure and this fits perfectly I will link it and I'll make sure I write in the description box what size it is because I think sometimes if you click some of the links it doesn't take you to the exact size that I purchased. This is carrying all of the weight unsurprisingly because it has two books in it for one. I would actually recommend these now for any large bag. I think any tote bag that I buy that doesn't already have like a lot of compartments in it, I will try and purchase one of these in like the perfect sizing. This for me was so beneficial because it did really help the book tote retain its structure. It's not super structured but it fills the bag perfectly so satisfying i will show you when i slot it back in it has so many compartments in it so it has two on the front three on the other side of the front one zip compartment in the middle that has pockets on either side the zip compartment as well you can remove it's got velcro on the end so it sits going through the middle but you can actually take it out if you need more space or you can reposition it so mine sits ever so slightly over so that my books can fit in and more often than not i have my skincare pouch which i take backwards and forwards to ryan's house for the things that i don't have duplicates of because i have a lot of duplicates i've got my two books so i've got little fires everywhere which i have just started reading and i'm very excited about and then i've got the five minute journal as well then we have another two compartments on the kind of outer edge of this the back edge and then there's another bigger compartment on the outside of the organizer as well which currently just has an invoice voice for my car servicing. But if you had a small laptop or an iPad, it would fit in there. I have the MacBook Pro. It's the 15 inch, so it is huge. I like a big screen for all of my tabs that I have open on my browser. The one thing to consider with this tote bag is the more you add into it, like it fits a lot, but the more you put in, the heavier it is going to be. I personally would try and make it as light as possible if I were taking it to work. So if I put a laptop in there, I would tr be trying to keep everything else very light because I don't fancy paying a physiotherapist to work on my back for the rest of my life. So the laptop is in there and then the organizer just slots in like that. I don't really take the organizer out very much. So I kind of just slide the laptop straight in and it fits in there perfectly. So that is kind of how everything looks in there. And this is the general gist of what the inside of the bag looks like as well. I really like the organizer. It just helps to keep everything looking really neat and tidy. That is the bag without the organizer. It can be a little bit floppy if it's not like well balanced and well weighted. But yeah, I'm very impressed with it on the whole for the fact that it's over a year old now and gets used every single day. But yeah, the bag organizer basically for my overnight stays. I have a nail care compartment. So we've got my nail like cuticle oil, nail polishes, <laughs> lovely Rimmel nail polishes. In this pocket on the side, I have a little 
Chanel hand cream. The three pockets on the other side, we've got my memory card reader, your sunglasses, my favorites. The zip compartment in the middle. If I were using this as like a day bag, like say I'm actually like going out to Brighton and I wanna take just like the big bag and I want somewhere to put my valuables, I really like the zip compartment for that. I've got a pen for my five minute journal, a couple of hair clips. I've always got hair bobbles, hair clips, that kind of thing, because I hate going to someone else's house and then realizing that I've left like my hair bubbles and I can't tie my hair up and oh I've got my favorite favorite perfume this is a mini sunset riot by all saints I love this fragrance we also have my phone which was just kind of slotted in there I normally when I'm going between houses have like a little kind of day bag crossbody style just for my mask hand sunny keys you know that vibe and my phone kind of flicks between it's wherever I just throw it at the time because I'm that kind of person and then we also have a mass of chargers so we've got my laptop charger and my phone charger there which are also adding to the weight of this bag I'm not very good at like not weighing my bag down and then we just slot you back in it fits perfectly like literally so perfectly it is the perfect width of this bag i love it and those organizers are so great you can get them off of amazon and so inexpensive as well so i'll link the bag organizers in the info box below for you if you're interested in them they also come in a range of colors as well which is goals and they also have like a little chain clasp which i don't have on them right now i don't think but it's like a little like a little clip and you can clip your house keys onto them if you want but yeah that is my one year review of my dior book toe i hope you found this useful do let me know if you would like to see more of these if there's any bags in particular that you know that i have that you would like to hear my thoughts on if you're new and you enjoyed this it would be lovely if you could subscribe i will leave a little thing on the screen right here yeah thank you so much for watching i hope you're all having a lovely day and i'll see you guys again very very soon love you bye